In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Many Christians are too often too worried about heaven. In fact, many Christians think, including us, I think, that the ultimate goal of following Christ, the ultimate goal of being a Christian is to get to heaven. At least that seems to be the, the popular notion among many of us. Of course, we cannot underplay the significance of heaven or afterlife. For instance, for those who were oppressed, like the enslaved communities in the past, or colonized communities in history, we know that belief in heaven was a big part of their faith and their worldview. In the midst of dehumanization and suffering, heaven reminded them that there was more to life than what was happening around them and to them. No matter how terrible the oppression might be, no matter how unimaginable the, the acts of dehumanization might be, there is always more. There is more that is coming in and through God. There is more to existence than what this life appears to be. And these beliefs helped these communities to struggle, to fight, to resist, and to thrive in the midst of the most unimaginable dehumanization or discrimination in history. But at the same time, we also need to remember that the idea of heaven for these communities and more actually begins here on earth. So these people were not simply looking or talking about pie in the sky, but rather about something that could be experienced here and now. A very good example of this kind of faith is what we see in the teachings of the likes of Archbishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa. As we know, Bishop Tutu spoke of heaven, but he spoke of heaven not as something or some place out there, but rather he spoke of heaven as Ubuntu, as community, a beloved community of people, of all God's children, a community of, God, of peace and justice. And certainly this community of peace and justice will find its fulfillment, its perfection in eternity, Yes, but that doesn't mean we just sit around doing nothing, waiting for that to happen. Rather, we create that Ubuntu, that community of love here. We create that spirit here. We kindle that spirit here. And we change the world we live into heaven. At least a shadow of heaven. And that is why people like Tutu fought against many forms of injustice, including apartheid and then later poverty, homelessness, and, and, and global capitalism, and so on and so forth. But we know that people like Bishop Tutu did not come up with these ideas by themselves. We do see them see these ideas in the Gospels itself. 
as Jesus prepared his disciples for his death, resurrection, and his ascension, he wanted them to know two things. One, like we heard in the gospel lesson this morning, he wanted them to know that he was going away. He was not going to be with them in the physical form forever. And we already saw last Sunday how the disciples, or the week before, how the disciples were struggling to make sense of the resurrection. They were trying to live in this new normal situation. And in John's Gospel we see that Jesus was already preparing them for all these things. He told them that his presence will be with them always, even after his death and resurrection, but in a different way. For example, in John 14, 15, and 16 chapters, you see that Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. He said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you the Paraclete, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, to be with you, to guide you, to strengthen you, and to lead you. Secondly, he wanted them to know, this is before his death, to know that his risen presence is made possible through the community of love. Again, we find this in the gospel lesson that we heard this morning. Jesus gives his commandment, probably, if you might say so, the commandment to love one another. You may remember this was our reading from John chapter 13, was our reading for Maundy Thursday, if you recall. For Jesus, even as he blessed the bread and the wine, he washed the food of his, feet of his disciples, he wanted them to know that to love one another is the most important thing to do. To live together as God's children was the most important thing of all. And that was the way in which they could tell the world that they were followers of Jesus. To live together as God's children with Jesus was to be the church. And this is why these gospel writers were recalling the words of Jesus almost 50, 60 years later and writing them down and saying, you know what, the church? You do all sorts of things, but don't forget the most important thing of all, to love one another. It was a community that broke down all kinds of barriers and divisions, human-made barriers and divisions. The passage from the Acts of the Apostles, where Peter speaks of his vision about the Roman centurion Cornelius, which we heard as the first lesson this morning, emphasizes precisely this point. Peter is told by God that what God has made clean, he is not to consider unclean. Until then, the church was made up of one particular group of people, the Jewish people. It was a small community, a sort of an ethnic community of one particular group. And here Peter is said, is told, go beyond this. This is not what I meant. This is not what I wanted. Include everyone in your community. The church was not made of one particular kind of people. It included all God's children because God has made them holy. In that sense, you could say that the church was a revolutionary movement in the first century, although it sadly lost its way as time went on, at least more often than not, as we know. Now, church is the foretaste of heaven. This means that heaven also is an inclusive community of love and peace and justice, which begins here. We believe in heaven not because we can live on forever, 
or because it is some beautiful luxurious place filled with gold and silver and pearl of course we do have you know songs that that portray heaven as this place with pearly gates and you know golden streets and maybe maybe not who know who knows but that's not the point of heaven jesus tells us heaven is where god's children love one another where everyone dwells together in love in perfect unity and we believe in heaven because we can taste it right here and right now whenever wherever god's children and god's creation dwell in peace and love this is the heaven that was envisioned by prophetic leaders by bishop tutu as i said and also pe people like dr king who spoke of the beloved community of god and several others we may even say that there is no heaven out there separate from the heaven here michael battle a well known anglican theologian who teaches at the general theological seminary says that if there is no heaven here then probably there is no heaven out there if you cannot imagine if you cannot live if you cannot experience god's presence god's love here in this world if you live by discriminating others and looking down on others and condemning others and damning others probably you may not get to heaven because if you can't love here how on earth are you going to live in love for eternity you will be complaining there in heaven and that's not the place to complain so you might find another place so heaven is here there's no heaven out there it begins here it is here my dear sisters and brothers may we remember that our calling as christ disciples is not really to get to heaven but rather to work to love one another and to work with our lord to create that heaven wherever we are right here and may we remember that the risen and glorified jesus is always here of course we'll get to this more when we get to the ascension day but the risen and glorified jesus is not somewhere out there it's more of a cultural imagination we'll get to that later but the risen and crucified and risen jesus the glorified jesus as he himself promised his disciples is with us to the end of the age and he is here creating heaven on earth and may we remember that what makes heaven possible is not some of the things that we often imagine it to be but rather simply following his command to love one another